What are the three core learning capabilities? Well, this took, of course, many, many years, and we had a lot of different kinds of ideas, but gradually it coalesced into, uh, one, this kind of spirit of of deep intention, you might say, or aspiration may even be a better word. What do we really want to create here? Um, to engage in learning is hard. You know, it's 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 ever it's common. You know, we all learn to walk, we all learn to talk. But at a point in your life, you didn't walk, right? And at a point in your life, you didn't talk. At some point, the learner crystallizes a vision, something they really want to be able to do. And without that, that learning process never happens. So mm -hmm. that crystallization of aspiration or intention and vision would be an example of what that is like when you crystallize it. Well, what actually are we trying to accomplish here? That's really critical. And building the capability to foster vision personally and collectively has always been a core leadership capability. But then, of course, you try things, as I was saying, and they don't work. So the ability to reflect you know, well, we tried that, what happened? It, it, and it's kind of an obvious thing in a way because we can't think of any learning process, you know, walking, riding a bicycle, anything like that, where it isn't the basic process of trying something and then seeing how it works. But when you're learning to walk or learning to ride a bicycle, it's just you. And the reflection process is a little more immediate. And it's you know, obviously mostly neuromuscular kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There is a reflection process going on, but it's not at a conceptual level, and it's not collective. So in an organizational setting, that reflective dynamic is not only, you know, simple actions, it's actions that are much more complex, involve many, many people, and you've got to really think together about, well, what's going on here? If you looked at how those software uh, the real leading software companies work. They organize all kinds of reflective processes and they have people whose roles is to get people together usually online and gather a lot of data and look at the data. That data is important because that tells you what happened but it doesn't tell you what you need to understand. Uh -huh. So that process of going from an observation, some data, to an understanding of what's going on is the process of reflection. You know, What, what did we expect to happen but what did happen? Well, how were we thinking that might have been off? Hmm. How do we have to think differently to get an outcome that we really want? That's the process of reflection. And the only big addition to it, of course, is that in an organizational or work setting, it's collective, not just mm -hmm. individual. So that's the second core capacity. We've often called it the capacity for a reflective conversation, okay. to have different qualities of communication and conversation that allow people to actually enhance their ability to think and think together effectively in complex settings. And the third capability is to understand the complexity. And and these are really, you know, if I could say it's a three-sided coin, I'd say they're three sides of the same <laughs> coin. But different ways to tease out an interrelated set of capacities, but to see the larger system. You know, this has always been a problem in businesses. You know, they, they focus in any organization. Everybody gets fragmented. You do this, you do this, you do this, and everybody forgets what everybody else is doing because mm -hmm. they're so busy doing their thing. You know, the, again, the assembly line would be kind of the archetypal example. Everybody doing their, literally they called it their piece. It was all piecework. Mm. But organizations everywhere suffer from silos, fragmentation, uh, chimneys. People use different metaphors in different parts of the world or country. But, but that problem of not seeing how it goes together, not having the skills and the time to step back and go, wait a second, if you do it this way and you do this and you do this and you do this, it actually might not add up to what we want. So seeing the larger system is always a crucial leadership skill. And, and today, more than ever, it's not just important within, but between. So within the organization, yes, that's true, because we do get fragmented. And that's why uh, working in teams has become one of the most important developments, mm -hmm. I would say, in management in the last 20 years. Now, virtually everybody works in teams. So at least in that team, a bunch of people have to put things together and think about what each other is doing. Now, between the teams, they can still kind of get in a lot of trouble. But at least it's moving in the right direction. But increasingly, uh, the, the systems we need to understand are not just individual organizations, they're networks of organizations. Uh, uh, I spend all my time in the last decade working on big projects that are collaborations amongst many different organizations. For example, in the food industry, trying to see what it takes to manage the whole of a food supply chain 
for the well-being of the farmers and the health mm -hmm. of the farming ecology, uh, the use of water, as well as the quality of the food that eventually comes out. But if you don't manage the whole of that system, ultimately that system will fail, and that's exactly what is happening in a lot of our agriculture around the world. So those are the three core capabilities, being able to cultivate aspiration, reflection, and seeing the larger system.